Hey there toy collector friends and Star Wars fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. I'm the time traveling toy collector and this is the Star Wars Return of the Jedi retro multi-pack uh, from Hasbro or Kenner as it's disguised here. So we've already had a look at the two um, Star Wars retro sets that came as a, a, a box set for A New Hope, the original Star Wars figures that were re-released in this format. And now we've skipped ahead to Return of the Jedi. I think, I'm not 100% sure why we made this choice was made, but I think it's probably because we are celebrating the 40th year of Return of the Jedi this year in 2023. And that may be why we've seen this as the next release. It does make for a really interesting release because we have some classic figures that I remember. And, and, and frankly, uh, an inclusion that I do not remember, but more on that very shortly. Um, we'll take a look at the box first, but before we get too far into the video, just a quick reminder to like the video. And also while you're there, tap on that subscribe button. I'm desperately trying to get to my next milestone. Uh, it's completely free. I'm not after any money. Um, it's just a small click from yourselves, but a giant step um, for the video ultimately. Um, and I for one will have my undying gratitude uh, thrusting towards you. Uh, that sounds weird, so we'll move straight on. So yeah, here we go with the Star Wars Return of the Jedi multi-pack box set. And again, uh, <clears throat> some obvious things is we've got this sort of detailing that we've seen on some of the other sort of retro collection stuff, which is that sort of weathering around the edges. I, I kind of fluctuate between thinking it's a good idea and a terrible idea. I understand what they're going for with it, of course I do, but I'm not I'm not a major fan, I have to be honest. I do think it's a little bit, it spoils the boxes because from a collector point of view, if you were somebody who has collected these individual carded figures in the past, um, you're probably going to do your utmost to not let it get into this condition. Um, so personally, I don't know why, just because we're saying, oh look, these are, these are in the mould of the original figures from, you know, 40 years ago. Uh, we need to make the packaging look a little bit knackered. Um, as I say, I get the theme of it, I get the idea. I just think it's a bit unnecessary because these things weather enough, you know, ultimately in time. So I would I would prefer that they didn't sort of manufacture weathering because it just seems a little bit um, redundant, to be honest. Uh, and I remember uh, when I was working in a collector's toy shop um, many years ago, one of the things that I was taught quite early on was the art of using uh, black felt tip pens to rectify that kind of error or, or that kind of weathering. Uh, and it's very easily done, not this is not in any sort of fraudulent way, I'm sure. Um, it just smartened it up and made it not look quite so raggedy. So I suppose if you wanted to, you could do exactly the same thing here. Um, if you want to smarten it up, I won't because I think it's fine. Um, as is um, but yeah it's I, I, I it's a bit of a marmite scenario I think you either really think that's a really great idea and it looks it looks it gives it an authentic weathered feel or you think why have you done that because it's an unauthentic weathering and I would rather have had a pristine box because as a responsible collector I'd have kept it pristine but you know we can't change it unless you actively change it get the get the um, black pens out but otherwise Let's take a look at what we do have. We have that retro collection symbol on there, which immediately dispels any myth that it's, you know, original. And of course, the 40th logo of Return of the Jedi. Um, we also have a very interesting, as I said before, an eclectic range of figures. So we can see that the contents um, is the Gamorrean Guard, uh, Admiral Akbar, Yak Face, Mon Mothma, Wicked W. Warwick, and the Emperor's Royal Guard. Um, I had, back in my childhood, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, lost to time now, of course, but uh, again, much like the original box, um, collector's box sets of the, of the figures, very excited to see these re-released. Um, I definitely didn't have Yak Face, which I feel very bad about, because uh, considering this is now one of those figures that in its original condition from the original run is worth quite a bit and if you want to see any in hand have a look at my youtube page time traveling toy collector 
and you'll see when I've been to various conventions, there's usually somebody selling an original in excess of a thousand pounds. So I'm pretty glad that I've got this version for significantly less than that. Um, never had Mon Mothma, but I don't believe Mon Mothma was ever released um, in this format in the original range. So I, that's why I think this is quite an interesting inclusion for the first Return of the Jedi box set, because I don't think there was an original version of her character. But as we're seeing her pop up in a range of the Disney Plus uh, Lucasfilm Star Wars series now, I think it's nice that she's getting the figure. Um, I just wasn't expecting it. So if we move to the top, we get uh, a nice range of uh, character photos as they would have appeared on the original cards. Um, and that's kind of, if I'm honest, that's kind of it. We've got logo on the side. The second side is pretty much the same as the first. We've got obviously the warnings about not eating any of the plastic figures or their accessories. And at the bottom, we've got all the disclaimers, um, the notification that there are small parts, etc., etc., and basically don't eat stuff that you can't digest and that you might choke on, which I think is, you know, fair and sensible advice. Uh, ahead of the video, I did open the box and take the, the figures out. And <clears throat> my first figure is disappointing, and I'll show you why. Um, my card is bent. That's how it was in the packaging. So I'm a bit disappointed. It's something I can't fix, so I'm already planning on <clears throat> on, on sorting this because it's it's doable. But it didn't really make me very happy when I took it out. However. Here we go with the first of the figures, and it's Wicket W. Warwick, uh, the Ewok from Endor. We do have this thing. I'm just going to get this out of the way now. The stickers are on all the figures. It's disappointing. I don't know why they do it, um, but they do. So without steaming it off, which I probably could do, um, I'm just going to ignore it and leave it where it is. It would be at least nice if they could have had it, <laughs> you know, square on. I know it's a circle, but, you know, you know what I mean. Um, again, the weathering is consistent around the piece, but we're not going to look at talk about the weathering. We're going to look at the figure. And Warwick, uh, sorry, Wicket W. Warwick is a adorable little figure, much like old uh, Yoda and the Jowers. It's one of the more diminutive figures, complete with his little fighting pole or walking stick, depending on how you look at it. Um, no soft goods for us. We've got a plastic, uh, plasticky rubber cowl over his head. Um, very minimal points of articulation, but yeah, very, very recognisably the Wicket figure from, from the 1980s. The reverse of the cards, and I'll, I'll do this briefly on the other one so there's not to, it to become a bore, but there's not a massive amount of uh, new information. There's no photos of the carded releases in the range, which I think is a shame because that would have added to the authenticity element of the design of this sort of retro product but instead they do give us the list but you know it's not it's not the same as having those photos on the card and it wouldn't have killed them really but uh yeah so warwick very nice little figure uh not an awful lot i can say um only accessory is his well it's a spear really isn't it let's be honest uh you've probably already typed it in the comments it's not a walking stick it's a spear um so yeah so you feel free to delete the comment if you've already posted it. I, I see it's a spear. I don't even know why I said walking stick, to be honest. Uh, just testing to see if you're listening. Uh, okay, so I think, again, lovely inclusion in the set. I'm going to pop him over here. Um, next up, uh, the Gamorrean Guard. Love this figure. Interestingly, now you'll see here, he's coming with some info at the bottom there that... Uh, Warwick didn't come with. Oh, he does. Ignore me. I didn't see it there. So it, it's flush in his one. Um, so I'm a complete liar. He does come with it. This one's a bit more messy, which is probably figures. Um, I love this figure. I loved this figure when it was first released. Uh, and I've always loved it. And I can actually tell you when I first got mine, um, it was the Christmas of the year that it came out. Um, it was a it was a Christmas present. Um, I'd... I'd given a random list of Star Wars figures that I didn't have, this was one of them. So seeing this again in a card, ignoring the fact we've got all this ridiculous weathering, 
and on this one they've really gone to town but hey ho um but i really yeah i it, it was it was like traveling back in time which kind of is the theme of some of these videos um but yeah look at the the the, the face sculpt on this is just <clears throat> classic 80s because uh, it captures it fine and you know what i know that there've been subsequent releases of these figures all of these figures actually i think um in, in maybe in the black series or whatever else um with infinite more infinitely more posability a ton of additional accessories he just comes with his axe there you can see that i hope uh, with his axe um but you know what it doesn't make up for the fact that these figures really started something for us back in the in the 70s and the 80s i know these are 80s specific but my goodness me even now i can i'm, I'm transported back to points in the summer where i had where i was playing with these guys these figures yeah it, it sort of transports me to a safe place i don't know if that makes any sense if that makes sense to you let me know if it doesn't make sense to you uh let me know that as well uh, and maybe i need to seek some sort of counseling but from my point of view one of the key reasons that I am I'm sort of very much drawn to these is that they suck me right back to, to places where I felt safe, where I felt um, secure in myself um, in ways that you don't always feel when you're growing up, when you're an adult. Um, and of course, when you're an adult, you tend not to surround yourself with these things, unless you're nuts like me and you start to, start to collect them all over again. Um, but I think it's there's an, there's, uh, an adage that uh, another collector uses which is about you don't um stop playing because you grow old you grow old because you stop playing and i really like that and i think there's a lot of truth to that so i now real that roll that out as my excuse for collecting these things um again back of the card consistent no no surprises there but again a beautifully detailed figure you can see it captures all the evocative elements of that original figure the big sandals the shoulder pads, the you know the the, the leather um, straps and the belt and the hubble harness, I suppose, and the and the skull cap, the metallic skull cap with his little horns there. Let me see if you can get those in, if you can see them clearly enough. I mean, it is it is an iconic design. They all are really. It's an iconic design. Um, yeah, I just think it's adorable. So let me let me get the other ones in shot. Next up, ah, oh, this was a lovely figure, uh, the Emperor's Royal Guard complete with sticker not going to bitch about it done it um again here we do get some soft goods i think this for me was one of the most first times i really noticed the soft goods element in the uh, classic figures um and he has his combat staff it's called something else but i don't know what it was again no real articulation one of his arms is stuck under his gear anyway but a beautiful figure and again you can't really see it here because it's blocked off by the uh warning not to swallow any of it but um yeah i think slightly slender leg design than i remember uh, and i'm sure the other arm is under there somewhere we can just about see it uh but yeah i i thought again another iconic design really loved it um i've seen the subsequent re-releases of these figures well i say re-releases the upgrades of the figures like the black series super articulate all of those things really impressive but this was the stuff that triggered and stimulated our imaginations and i think they they do an, a, a terrific job then and actually they don't they do a really good job now of evoking that time so if any of you who are watching this i'll pop him back over here as well <coughs> excuse me if any of you are watching this who collected these figures the, the first time around you probably know what i'm talking about when i talk about how they they take you straight back to this time when Whatever was going on in the world or in your in your family lives, these were. It's going to sound tragic a bit, the, but the, these were an extended family, a safe space, something. Some people, um, the toys that I could play with that transported me into my imagination and away from some of the less pos positive realities of life at the time. Um, so let's not dwell on that. Let's dwell on Mon Mothma. So I do not believe. And if I am wrong, please correct me in uh, the comments. But I do not remember a Mon Mothma figure being released in the original Kenner range. I think there were some in the Power of the Force range, 
But again, that might be a, fa a false memory. And I'd stopped collecting at that point. They, they were coming out after I'd moved on into the world of some adult, uh, well, broadly speaking, some adulthood uh, development. So I'd left toys behind for a bit. But I think this is, if this, if this is a sort of new sculpt um, of a new figure, but in the classic mold, I think they've done an exceptionally good job because it does scream um, the classic figure. It screams it in terms of the way that the folds are, are molded into the plastic, um, the way that it's clearly a design, it's supposed to be like a tunic uh, or a dress, but there's legs. You can see that it's articulated legs, which is brilliant. Um, reminds me of the Princess Leia, as does the pistol. It's so clearly there's a, there's a more feminine pistol, and this is the more feminine pistol that the more feminine um, figures would have. Um, I think it's lovely that we've got the uh, designs around the neck. Uh, again, there's, I mean, there's not a lot to it, and there's not a lot to look at, but it is there, and it is, again, evocative of the period it is supposed to represent. Again, I'm, I really, genuinely don't think there was originally one of these, but if you know differently, please let me know in the comments below, um, especially if you've got pictures, because I'd love to see the original ones of these. But, um, and I look forward to being corrected on that topic. Um, two left to go. It's a trap. Yes, it is. It's Admiral Akbar. Um, and this was brilliant. When I saw this, I was, again, immediately transported back in time. And I'll tell you the two things that did it. And isn't it weird? These are the weird things that do this for you. It was the hands, which I always found slightly repugnant, I'm afraid, didn't like it at all. And the weird colorization of the of the outfit. So the yellow stripe down the side and that color, the, the sort of top color on the, on the white top of the tunic and the, and the top of the leg section, which again, very nicely well produced here. Um, and I just, I just remember it. I mean, obviously everything else is very, is, is well, I was gonna say very the same with that slightly peculiar Admiral Akbar head um, and those eyes and everything else that goes with it. Um, but uh, yeah, there's just something about that, that, the arms and the tunic design in the figure that stands out to me. It's the same thing they did with the Greedo figure. And I'm really hoping that we do get a Greedo figure in another collector's box set. Um, or Walrus Man or Hammerhead because there was a real liberty taken with the figure but it made no difference. Do you know what I mean? It made no difference at all. It actually just made it more of an imagination piece which of course I'm, I'm here for the imagination piece. I love it. Um, but again Admiral Akbar in all his glory there's his uh, command baton or whatever it is. I'm not going to get into a row about what, what's the accessories called. Um, Lovely, lovely reproduction of that figure. And it gives us one more to look at. And yes, not deliberately, but it is it is this one for last. It's Yak Face. Never had this as a child. Really, really gutted that I didn't have it as a child. Although if I had had it as a child, I'd have ripped this off, played it with it till it was in pieces, and it would not be now worth a thousand pounds had I kept had I got one. Um but this, yeah, this is Again, it's, it's, a, it's a strange figure, it's a lovely little figure, but I think it came out, if it came out at all in the UK, and it probably did, um, it, it was after I'd stopped collecting them, um, which is shockingly disappointing. Um, this picture, however, looks a little like it's some sort of dubious animation or some sort of artist's reimagining of, of the character rather than an actual still from the movie. I could be doing it a disservice. I'm just saying that's what it looks like to me. Um, so again, let me know what you think in the comments. But yep, yeah, the figure is, as I say, I never had this, so I can't compare it to any of my memories, but I have seen the original for sale for ludicrous money at conventions and, uh, well, yeah, conventions. And um, it looks, this. I'm looking at it, this is, this is that figure and you can see all the non points of articulation so it's literally you've got hips you've got shoulders and in this case you've got neck and a quite a lot of neck actually um so you're lucky uh and then there's this weapon 
pole thing here. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. Um, but pole weapons were quite the thing. There's a couple of those thematically in this set. Um, but yeah, I, I now have my own yak face and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring them back in and I'll try and I'll try and stand them up so I can get them all in shot. Uh, maybe I'll zoom out a little, oh, mind my fingers, zoom out a little bit, see if that will help get them all in shot. Uh, but you know what? I think this is a really, and I know I'm biased, I get that, but I think it is, maybe I'll move it around this way, that might help. Um, I think it's a, yeah, I think it's a really, really, really great set. I really do. I don't think we're going to be able to fit them all in this time because of their sizes. Uh, and then along comes Wicket back at the front with his bent box. It really annoyed me, but I'll see what I can do about that. Can I get them all? Let me just jiggle it a little bit more and see if I can do something with it to get them all into shot. Uh, Wicket's, Wicket is being resistant. Bless his heart. I might tilt it slightly so you can see them. Uh, but yeah, I'll go, go a bit aerial. So there they are. That's the collection in this particular box set. And I think it's a really, really nice collection. I think it's a really nice set. Uh, I think they've done a, a, a very good job here. Um, it's a bit pricey. Uh, and that was in the primary market. So I got it directly from, um, from Hasbro, Hasbro Pulse. Um, it's probably now available uh, in online retailers and it's almost definitely um, going to be available in the secondary market so watch out for that um, if you're sensible well I say if you're sensible if you're sensible or not sensible depending on your point of view and you really want to handle some of these like I do um, then you might want to see it as a as an investment and get two so you've got a set for display and a set that you can actually take out and uh, and manhandle. I will admit, having learnt my lesson from the first box set, I have done that. So I've got myself two box sets of these. They all both came together. So one I'm going to keep pristine in the box um, because I learnt my lesson. Don't think it'll have a huge impact because there'll be you know a ton of these on the market. But I'm going to I'm going to do that anyway, and I think I'm going to do it at some point especially if I can track down a second wave of that first set of figures, I might do a gigantic opening. Um, that doesn't sound very pleasant, but a gigantic opening of all of the um, these figures, just so I can finally get them in hand again after, you know, 40 odd years, which is frankly terrifying when you say it out loud. So do you think this collection how the you know deserves some sort of slot on your shelf or a place in your collection depending on how you want to keep them and keep them safe and display them and play with them um if you're asking me i'm biased because this is a major part of my childhood it's a major part of my intro into collecting toys playing with toys action figures um so i'm only ever going to say you absolutely should get these but equally i fully understand if you think well this you know they're three and three quarter inch not most of them, not all of them. Sorry, Wicket. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they don't really scale to anything. Um, it's a bit pants. I'm not going to bother. I get that. Um, it's a bit of a considered uh, a considered purchase, especially if you're going to get two. Um, but for me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, I, I think it's a shame about the, the choices around the cards and around the card weathering that they've gone with. So you can just see that there again. Uh, I think that's a must. I don't. I, I personally am not a fan of that, but I can live with it. Same for the box that they're kept in. It's a shame, but I can live with it. I, I get where they were go, what they were going for. Um, so I can. Yeah, it's not a big deal. But yeah, I'm personally very grateful. I've got these. I'm very excited to have them on Mothma. Don't think that was a real thing back in the day, um, but it could be a false memory. Please correct me below. And definitely pleased to have a yak, a yak face, which I never had. But really, really triggering of my memories is the Gamorrean Guard, Admiral Akbar, and to a lesser extent the uh, Emperor's Guard and, and poor old Wicket there. Um, again, lovely collection, well done Hasbro, really really happy to have these in hand. 
thank you for spending the last 25 minutes or so with me looking at these um, again if you haven't done so already please like the video and please subscribe so I can get up to my next significant milestone you've been a fantastic audience I've been the time traveling toy collector and this has been the Star Wars Return of the Jedi uh, retro collection box set arguably box set three um, this time from Return of the Jedi uh, a part of the celebrations of the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi and I very much look forward to seeing you in a future video. Please do remember that things of beauty really are a toy forever. Bye bye for now.